So, AMD's Big Navi. To say that the PC gaming space is desperate for information is an understatement. And, and I get it. I get why. Everyone likes an underdog to succeed. AMD's Radeon Group is definitely an underdog compared to NVIDIA, whose graphics department is three times bigger than Radeon. I get that. And I also get that after the lukewarm reception, to put it mildly, of Ampere, people are now at a fever pitch in hype. Hoping, praying, Big Navi actually delivers on, um, I guess, actually competing with the top of Ampere. And I think people would have forgiven me if I rushed out some of my information early. But I haven't done that. I haven't done that because it's I've really been trying to walk this line between making it clear that AMD will compete this year better than the previous few generations, and, and they are, guys. They're going to. And also controlling the hype. My God, the overhyping from AM delusionals has made it sound like Navi 23 can somehow beat the 3080. That's not going to happen. But what AMD does have in store is, well, I think this could be their Maxwell moment if things go according to plan. Now, before I get into those plans, I do want to make some things very clear. I do expect to keep receiving more information. I mean, I've been putting together what you're about to see for weeks, and every other day I would get something that confirmed what one source said or cancel out a theory I might have had. You know, so it's continuing to come in, and it will continue to come in. I will do a big video again, I'm sure, within a couple of weeks updating my information. If I get something wrong, I'll say it was wrong. But I now believe I have enough to take a more than a stab. But to give you a good actual picture at roughly what AMD's got packing this fall. I don't have every detail about every die in the lineup, but I have enough to suggest that NVIDIA is in some serious trouble. And so if little things change in the specs or ultimate performance, I'll update it. But I know enough. I know enough to tell you how good Big Navi is and even to take a stab at some of the lower die specifications and performance. And, well, if you've been waiting <laughs> for <laughs> Polaris, it was okay. And then you waited for Vega, and that was a slap in the face. And then maybe you waited for RDNA 1, and that was above average compared to the previous gens. Well, if you're waiting for Big Navi, I think it's going to have been worth the wait. Let's get into the info. Ooh, I can feel the anticipation through the internet from you guys. But I will say this first, too. I did something interesting with color in this presentation. Things that are red are things that I am almost entirely sure about. And things in white are things I'm mostly sure about. I didn't put anything in this presentation that's a complete guess. You know, some things might have a couple sources that disagree or maybe even half disagree. And if that's true, I had to come to a conclusion on my own. So... I just don't want to pretend I know more than I do. There's some stuff I'm more sure of, and like I said, this will be updated. But anyways, let's get into it with some of that red text I mentioned first. Navi 21 is the top die. There is not some secret 96 CU die coming to gamers this fall. I just have to say this from the beginning. I know some of you are like, duh, but my God, this stuff I've seen out of AMD fanboys speculating when things already sound pretty good for AMD is insane. I just need to get this out first. There is not a secret die. Now, Navi 21 also uses GDR6. Another thing I've seen rampant speculation about. HBM samples have been tested, but currently even the top professional cards being marketed behind closed doors use GDR6. I can never entirely rule out an HBM model coming eventually. And yes, I did hear a year ago that AMD was considering a top die that had both controllers. But the fact is there's zero evidence any of these HBM models are coming to gamers anytime soon, and even the professional roadmap doesn't show it. So for now, just accept that it's normal GDR6. And also know that AMD is considering 18 gigabit per second GDR6 from the top model. 
but it's not officially selected yet. That's pretty much the fastest they're going to get to at the top model this year if they choose it. GDR6X has been deemed too inefficient by AMD. AMD sources have also consistently mentioned VRAM and efficiency increases over the previous gen as winning features against Ampere. See, I make this its own point because when people see, oh, it's only, you know, GDR6, you guys got to understand, AMD's going with GDR6 over the buses that I'm about to show you because they believe that's more than enough. They have architected this architecture to not need a lot of bandwidth. This is something they, they really hammered hard when they worked with Sony and Microsoft on RDNA 2. It's something they've been lagging behind NVIDIA for a while. Now, also know that AMD is feeding AIBs a ton of incorrect info. I know that there was recently thermal testing going on, but most of this was done with dummy test kits that only simulate what the heat will be like coming out of RDNA 2. I also know that internally there has been some testing done, and so we may have seen some clock speed leaks that were correct, but the BIOS was locked so that they couldn't do full rendering. They do not want performance getting out. Most of those gaming benchmarks you've seen leaked about RDNA 2, I'm almost entirely sure have been fake, guys. Also, many die configurations have been tested that will never see the light of day. In fact, one such model was a 384-bit ADCU die. They have put together multiple final designs around early this year, and they tested which ones turned out the best. And in addition to that, though, AMD has also been putting out fake IDs. I have two sources that are sure of this. So there's fake IDs, fake specs, and then, of course, rejected dies that coincide with a lot of those fake IDs. Do you think AMD doesn't know people check Linux drivers? Like, you're not that clever, guys. AMD's aware of how things have been leaking during previous generations, and they're messing with leakers. Now... When I move on to features, I just want to say the majority of the focus of this video is about rasterization performance and the overall lineup. To this day, software is still somewhat elusive. Ray tracing performance is not confirmed, but I will say the following. The initial run of RDNA 1 had hardware level bugs. Those bugs contributed to the driver issues we saw in late 2019. Now, they still got them to work fine with driver updates, and of course, they patched those. I shouldn't say patched. They did retap out some dies that had the bugs fixed at a hardware level, but this has still made it kind of a nightmare for writing code for RDNA 1. So AMD is aware of the problems they made before. I even talked to someone who said that the complaints about AMD drivers last year were totally legitimate. This is a focus of theirs to make sure RDNA 2 launches with smooth working drivers. And additionally, ray tracing should be better than Turing. And I do believe there is some new upscaling sharpening algorithm or program that they will use that they will market as a DLSS competitor. But that's all I can really say right now. The software stack is still a closely guarded secret. Although I will say one more thing too, I continue to hear that RDNA 2 is far better at machine learning than most people seem to expect right now, and I even heard mentions of machine learning accelerated features that will be used in gaming. Can't say what they are quite yet though. Now, Navi 21. There is, at the top of the stack, a prosumer Omos Quadro A6000. I talked about this in a recent video. This is directly being compared to the A6000. That's that Quadro 6000, I called it. It first leaked, you know, what is it, 10,752 core, 384-bit, uh, 48 gigabyte card. It is being compared to be almost as good as that, and there is evidence it is also competing in some machine learning tasks. This is a card that has 80 compute units and is clocked between about 2 to 2.2 gigahertz. Additionally, this has a 250 watt TDP. That is correct. They have something that's close to the very top GA102, something they haven't even released in the 3090 that is using 100 watts less energy than the 3090. And this is all done over a 256-bit bus with 32 gigabytes of RAM. I know you're saying that's impossible, that can't happen, but there's a reason I've taken so long to get this video out. I really, really, really wanted to confirm this architecture is as good as it sounds. Guys, it is being compared to top GA102, although not quite as good, but it only has a 256-bit bus and uses substantially less energy. 
Now, this is what you guys want to hear about. Top Gaming Navi 21. I've consistently stated that this card will at least be close to the RTX 3080, and I can now confirm that AMD was not impressed with the 3090's performance last week. Sources connected to AMD are starting to sound more bullish than even a month ago, and I do suspect that they're bumping up the specs. I think the original idea was to have the prosumer card have the full compute unit count, clock, you know, cut down a lot of the dual compute units. You can clock it higher and only go to 68 to 72 CEOs. But this is, a lot of people are saying they're holding last minute meetings to push it further. This is why they didn't finalize everything yet until they saw Ampere reviews in case a situation such as that horrible Ampere launch actually happened and it has. Now this will have 72 to 80 CUs. I'm sure of that. I am also sure that it will be clocked at 2.15 to 2.3 gigahertz. I am sure of the clock speeds. Navi 21 is going to be incredible for gamers, I believe. And this will have a 250 to 300 watt TDP. Again, remember the prosumer card will be the best yields. And I do believe they will overclock the top gaming card, slightly cut it down and try to get it to 300 watts. Because 300 watts, still less than the 320 watt 3080. Now, only 60 gigabytes of RAM, of course. A bunch of other people have been saying that and other leakers and stuff. So I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Moving on, cut down gaming Navi 21. Again, I know what the top die is. I know what they're likely to do for the top gaming card. But, you know, I know there's been a lot of different cut down samples. So what AMD ultimately selects, I'm not 100% sure on, right? But anyways, I do believe it was initially planned as a highly cut down 60 CU model with high, very high clock speeds that was going to compete with the 3070. But if they're pushing up the top Navi 21 gaming card, I suspect they would push this up as well. I also know that there were 10 gigabyte RDNA 2 cards tested. One source said that he thought it might be Navi 21. Actually, a couple did. But to me, that doesn't make that much sense for gamers. And I was at least told that if they have been testing a 10 gigabyte version of Navi 21, it's going to be prosumer only. This card should be then 60 to 72 compute units with clock speeds assume, uh, assumed to be around the top Navi 21 gaming card. Again, assuming they don't lock down clock speeds for segmentation purposes like they did with the RX 5700. And then a 200 to 250 watt TDP, of course, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm pretty certain they will give 16 gigabytes to both of these cards. GDR6 isn't as expensive as you guys would think it is, um, but I would not rule out, of course, an 8 gigabyte model to undercut the 3070, nor would I rule out, potentially, when you look at this top gaming Navi 21, that they might do some special edition ADCU card, you know, with 18 gigabit per second memory and 2.3 gigahertz. They could still do that. However, I don't think they're going to give any of these gaming cards 32 gigabytes, and I'll get to why they don't need to in a second. All right, it's time to address the 256-bit situation, isn't it? Something was done to massively enhance bandwidth utilization. More than a couple of sources have talked to me with this dismissive tone of stop assuming it needs GDR6X. Stop assuming it needs a 3D 4-bit or 512-bit bandwidth. AMD's design goals, one of their main goals as they worked with Sony and Microsoft was to design an architecture that made far, far, far better use of bandwidth than their previous generations. It's always been a weak point of theirs. And this is something Mark Cerny literally hinted at. AMD is continuously improving and revising their tech. For RDNA 2, their goals were, roughly speaking, to reduce power consumption by re-architecting the GPU to put data close to where it's needed to optimize the GPU for performance, and to add a new, more advanced feature set. I am not red gaming tech. I don't know if AMD's calling it Infinity Cache, and I don't know if he's correct. I'm not saying he's not, but I am saying I'm not going to pretend to know more than I do. But what I can say is that multiple sources are providing info that points to a large pool of Zen 2 like cache on die with rdna2 and that is how they're doing this and if you ask me i don't know how else they could be and it makes a lot of sense from what they've learned with the zen architecture itself this is logical that this is what they are doing and there's a lot of people that would say oh cash wastes so much die space and i would go does it though does it if they figured out a way to do it efficiently because we know they tested a 384 bit model we know there's been some hbm models tested what i'm told is that these models were tested with 
no cash or with the cash. And they found that just with the 256 bit bus, the cash was good enough to mean they didn't need more bandwidth. And at the end of the day, making the die a little bit bigger for that extra cash, I think would be worth it if it meant you could just have a cheaper, easier to cool 256 bit bus with not 24 gigabytes. You don't need to decide between 12 or 24, just 16 gigabytes. That makes the overall bomb cost cheaper. And I will just say this too, I'm not 100% sure. I know other leakers seem to be, but I am not 100% sure how it's done. But I do believe it is an on-die large section of cash. But of course, it could be off-die. It could be just an enhancement and, you know, bulking up of the L1 and L2 cash. But what I do know is there are patents out there filed by AMD and analysis of those patents that point to this too. It's not just Mark Cerny. It's not just my sources. There's a mountain of evidence AMD has an innovative approach to their caching system with RDNA 2 that allows it to make far better use with effective bandwidth. Anyways, that's Navi 21 and how I believe it makes use of its bandwidth. Let's get to Navi 22, at least what I think it is. All right, Navi 22. And I do just openly say this is more speculative. In fact, as I've said in that article in many recent videos, most of the Navi 22 stuff I put out there was almost entirely speculation based on other rumors circulating around. And I think a lot of those previous ones were false. Upon further reflection, I actually do believe the 40 CU rumor going around right now makes a ton of sense. I know people may think that's too small compared to having 80 CUs as the top die, but let me continue. The PS5 clocks to 2.23 gigahertz with a 40 CU die, and I do know for a fact Sony was considering even trying to push it up to 2.3 gigahertz, but they didn't, at least not to my knowledge, or they haven't announced it yet if they did. And a desktop 40 CU chip should then reasonably clock above that. With high clocks, I believe a 40 CU card could just crush Navi 10, and then you're still keeping a smaller die. Remember, three 250 millimeter square dies can be made for every two lower clocked 375 millimeter square. That's not what I'm saying the dies are. I'm just saying that's an example. If Navi 22, as recent rumors have suggested, is 192 bit, I assume that it also has a cache for mitigating low bandwidth, although I would suspect it's a smaller amount of cache. Maybe it just won't be as good as 4K. However, to be very clear, I am not sure of Navi 22 CU count. I am going off of a lot of recent rumors for that, and none of my sources are sure about the cache on models below Navi 21. You would assume it would have it if Navi 21 did, but I don't explicitly have verification that it does anyways what i'm saying is i could still see multiple configurations that i know have been tested like i know that there was probably some 10 gigabyte 60 cu model tested although again that source isn't too sure about it but i think right now 40 cus 192 bit makes the most sense for navi 22 below navi 21 and so anyways let me get into what i believe it will be this model if this is true could completely shake up the sub $500 market if you ask me. 40 CUs at 2.35 to 2.5 gigahertz. Yes, I am sure of these clock speeds. I suspect it will not hit 2.5 gigahertz like has been seen in recent leaks, but I am sure it is going above 2.3 gigahertz. And so if you think about it, a cut down Navi 21, say around 60 to 64 CUs, if it's clock 10% or more slower, this clock 10% higher than the cut down bigger die should actually slot in a solid just 25% below it. This is fine segmentation below cut down Navi 21. And again, I have seen 160 watts to 200 watts of power usage. I actually think it'll be closer to 160 to 170 watts. I think this will use less energy than an RX 5700, but providing significantly more performance. And again, 192 bit, 12 gigabytes. Yes, even below $500, I believe AMD is planning to bring 12 gigabytes to the mid range. Then, of course, there will be a cut down Navi 22 gaming card. I'm not sure, of course, how they'll cut it down. This is speculation. But I do believe they could have either a 12 gigabyte card and then a 6 gigabyte option that's maybe even close to $300. Or I believe that the root, those things that I saw floating around that were 10 gigabyte samples, could just be the 12 gigabyte bus cut down to 162, I mean, to 160 bit to have 10 gigabytes. I know for a fact there is a 10 gigabyte 155 watt card on the professional roadmap. I believe this 
is Navi 22, cut down for the professional market. I don't know if they'll bring that version to gamers, but I think they could. And of course, then it would be 32 to 36 CUs. That's a guess there. I'll say that. Um, and anyways, the efficient prosumer card, I basically already covered this again. A couple sources weren't sure if it was Navi 21 or not, but at 155 watts, I just think that is a 10 gigabyte Navi 22 card. And I it's on the road back, guys, so I know that one exists at the very least. Now, actually, while we're speculating, why don't we get to Navi 23 for a bit, huh? Now, this one is overwhelmingly more speculative. I can't confirm nearly as many things as Navi 22. And, of course, Navi 22 didn't have as many details as Navi 21, but let's get into it. I do know one thing, though. That's that there is an 8-gigabyte card positioned below the 10-gigabyte card on the professional roadmap. Below, to me, suggests this is probably Navi 23. It's also coming out after it. So you have to say, yeah, I don't think they would make a 256-bit 8 gigabyte card sold for less than a 160 bit 10 gigabyte card. I do believe that means that we can confirm basically that this is, you know, a 128 bit Navi 23. Now, if Navi 23 is 32 CUs, as the recent rumors have said, I actually think this could also make a lot of sense. You might say that 32 was too close to 40 in Navi 22, but consider these things. CUs don't take up very much space. You can look it up. Links are in the description. A dual compute unit on Navi 10 is around 4.2 millimeters squared. So if you can pack in that many CUs, I don't see why you wouldn't still just include 32 below 40, but then give it a 128-bit bus with faster GDR6 and just make it a killer 1080p 144 hertz gaming card. In fact, I could see this having very little cache, only enough to handle about 1080p or possibly no cache at all. And that's where the die space savings would come. They would say, hey, CUs don't take up a lot of space, but we're removing the cache. This is your high refresh rate 1080p card. Again, I'm not 100% sure in this, not even close to that. But this is what I suspect is going on with Navi 23. And I think it points out, if this is true, a very interesting strategy being put forth by AMD if we recap what these dice seem to be focused towards. Navi 21 has enough VRAM and cache to handle 4K, 16 gigabytes, but doesn't seem to race resources attempting to conquer 8K gaming. Guys, why do you think NVIDIA is focusing on 8K benchmarks with the 3090? That's what they're sure they'll win at, in my opinion. Navi 22 has more than enough VRAM, 12 gigabytes, and enough cache for 1440p and ultrawide resolutions in upcoming AAA games. You know, it's not going to be starved like already some games are showing on the 3080, but it doesn't need all of the bandwidth for 4K. If you want to play in 4K, get AMD's cut down Navi 21 or higher. If you want to play in 1440p like most gamers do, most people in the mid-range right now would want to do, get Navi 22. And then, of course, Navi 23 is somewhat bandwidth starved, but it has plenty of CUs, I believe, to run 1080p high refresh gaming, and that's what esports gamers would want anyways as well. This is the esports card targeted specifically at that market. So, yeah, at the end of the day, just to recap, my dart throw of what Navi 23 is, is roughly 5700 XT performance in 1080p, maybe a little lower, a little higher, 24 to 32 CUs, 128-bit, and 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it should only use 90 to 150 watts for the top card. That is what I believe it would consume if cut down Navi 22, I suspect, uses 155 watts. Now, let us get to the final summary of this information then, shall we? I've given you rough specs, what I've heard, what I know. Let me outline why I think this could be a devastating lineup against NVIDIA this fall. Professional Navi 21. 32 gigabytes, more VRAM and greater performance than A5000. A5000 is the professional 3D 4-bit cut-down version of A6000. That's comparable in performance in gaming to the 3080. We know this should exceed A5000, and it'll have more RAM as well. I know that validation is ongoing in December, and that it should launch in quarter one. And I've also been told with a source that says 100% confidence that it should be between two to $3,000. So this is what I was alluding to earlier when I said I don't think they need a 32 gigabyte gaming card to compete with the Titan. Considering AMD doesn't overcharge for its professional cards, I think at two to $3,000, 
if this beats the 3090 or is even around it, it's already putting pressure on it. And it kind of preemptively cuts the Titan out of the market. Like, what's the point of getting a semi-professional Titan when you can just get a real professional 32 gigabyte Navi 21? Navi 21, the top gaming card at 16 gigabytes. I'm sure this card will challenge the RTX 3080. I'm sure. This is in red text. But I've been told by a very high up source at AMD that it's unlikely to win at everything. So just keep that in mind and keep in mind that final performance is not finalized. But every source is sure this thing is going to at least make the 3080 look stupid if it doesn't outright win in every gaming scenario. Which is what I want to be clear about. I'm not sure it's going to win at 4K, but... I can't rule it out, and I'm sure it's going to trade blows in some games at this point, and it will offer more VRAM, lower power consumption, and it will hard launch by Thanksgiving, and I do believe that it will be between $550 to $700. I know this is a big range in pricing, but when I look at the bomb, I think they could afford to sell this with that 45% Lisa Sutex, potentially for as low as $550, but I think they're going to go for higher margins when they know that even if they match the 3080 at lower power consumption and higher VRAM, it's probably going to sell like gangbusters at 700. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm sure they can make do selling this for 550, but if they push it hard enough to trade blows with the 3080, I don't think they'll charge more, but I don't see why they would charge less. And then of course, cut down Navi 21, 16 or eight gigabytes. I do kind of suspect, honestly, in my gut, they're going to make this 16 gigabytes as well. Performance above the 3070, most likely with that 16 gigabyte buffer and a hard launch by December. Although of course they could launch right next to 21 if they wanted to. And I do believe that with this being cut down, this could just be simply like $550 below the $700 Navi 21. But if there's an eight gigabyte version, yeah, I think they could just make it 450 and say, hey, we got an eight gigabyte card that outperforms the 3070 for less money and then there's navi 22 with 12 gigabytes of ram do you see what's happening here by the way in this lineup the 3080 only has 10 gigabytes and amd is having a spread where even the mid-range cards are starting to make nvidia look stingy for what they've done with vram capacity RTX 2080 super performance or higher, likely launching in Q1 based on the professional roadmap I've seen, and I did adjust to what it would usually launch with gaming, and I believe, and I have put together a bomb, and let us remember, I got the prices right on the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 5 digital, and the PlayStation 5 disc from the bomb sheet I put together estimating it. This is what I did for my job before I went YouTube full-time. I believe they can sell a 12 gigabyte card that outperforms a 2080 Super for around the price of a 5700 XT, but I wouldn't be surprised if they charged a bit more. They can certainly justify it compared to NVIDIA's lineup. And then, of course, cut down Navi 22. Depending on what they do, you know, I think you could have a 12 gigabyte card at 350, perhaps. Or I do suspect it might be 10 gigabytes. But if they go down to a 6 gigabyte version as well, yeah, that could go all the way down to the 5600 XT range, I believe. And then, of course, there is Navi 23. 8 gigabytes, around 5,700 performance, much lower power usage, a quarter, two, or three launch based on the roadmaps I've seen. And you know what? With this die size that should be around the 5,700 XT, if not a little smaller if they don't include cash, I think this is the 5,500 XT replacement that increases performance by 50% or more. This is, yeah, this would be an impressive esports gaming card. And so, yeah, there you go. What I know of Navi 21, what little I know of Navi 22, and my dart throw at Navi 23. I think this is a lineup that could make a mockery of Ampere, even if it doesn't take the performance crown. And it probably won't. Let me be clear. I don't think it's going to take the performance crown. But do you see what's happening? Do you see why I've been bullish about RDNA 2 for months? Do you see why I've made that video, you know, breaking the NVIDIA hype where I said they don't need to take the performance crown to make a mockery of their competition this fall. All they need to do, better prices, better availability, good drivers, and higher VRAM capacities for a reasonable price. And this thing should just make what NVIDIA is trying to pull off look really silly. And just keep in mind that whether they take the performance crown or not, AMD is confident they're going to take market share. I can't say who this source is that I talked to. It, it's someone in AMD 
very high up. You've seen, I've, and you guys have seen on Twitter that I've talked to some of these people that are pretty high up there publicly. It's about a handful of people you can guess from, but I'm not going to say exactly who. But this is a direct quote that they're not debating anymore, that they know it's time to put up or shut up, and that they will give NVIDIA a run for their money this fall. With quotes like that, I'd be pretty nervous if I was Jensen Wang, especially when I know I'm backed into a corner. As I've highlighted in my NVIDIA's Ultimate Play article, which I have been updating with new information as I can receive it that supports it, the bomb on AIB 3080s is roughly around $600. And those coolers are about $50 to $100 cheaper than what it takes to make the more compact, nicer looking FE cooler. So FEs are probably sold at around a 10% profit. And AIBs are only making, you know, 20, 30% profits. And they're getting a, a rebate right now. They won't soon. If AMD were to seriously challenge the 3080 in top performance, I don't know what NVIDIA could do for price drops unless they're willing to sell their cards at a loss. The fact of the matter is that while Samsung may be giving their dies to NVIDIA almost for free, the power delivery, capacitors, the entire ASIC cost and cooling on top of it required to make that die function effectively is far more expensive than any benefit they're getting from the cheaper silicon. And GDR6X also puts out more heat, is also more expensive than GDR6. NVIDIA has seriously backed themselves into a corner where if AMD touches the 3080, they have nowhere they can go except beg that their mindshare carries them through. A mindshare that I feel like they just destroyed with Turing and their latest ultimate play. And to those that say this is just an AMD fanboy's wet dream, I'm sorry, but this is actually me trying to keep hype under control. And it is my honest opinion. This is what I believe my best estimate is for what the RDNA2 lineup will look like. And I'll change the report if contrary info comes out that I feel I can trust. And so look for those follow-up videos. If you subscribe to my channel, Moore's Law is Dead, remember to ring the bell button as well. Remember to share this video to those people desperately trying to get a 3080 right now that is probably just going to give them black screens. Maybe wait for Big Navi. Let them know. Spread the word. And of course, if you have the extra money, but only if you do, consider supporting me on Patreon to get early ad-free access to multiple podcasts, exclusive podcasts, and the Discord where like-minded people will be discussing this video after it goes live. All right. Thank you for watching.